so many books in our house. Can you hear the sound of? I think it's time for a book mill roundup. Book mill roundup. Hi, hello, how are you? My name is Helen, and this is what the Red Hood said. So, as the title suggests, today I'm going to be running through some of the recent book mail that I got as a Waterstones bookseller. Um, and there's a lot of it. This is kind of over the past few weeks. It's not just all I got in one day. So I'm splitting this up into sections so you can skip the bits you're interested in and fast forward to the bits that you are. We have got contemporary fiction, historical fiction, teen fiction, children's fiction and other. I don't read a lot of non-fiction. If you can drop me suggestions of what I should read then please do. But for now it's a fiction only book mail. Round up, book mail, round up. Matteo Bruno. We don't talk about Bruno. Contemporary fiction, we have two. The first of these is Yinka, Where Is Your Husband? by Lizzie Damilola Blackburn. This comes out in March, March 31st. The Nigerian Accent Dictionary. Husband, pronounced Uzband. Now, one, a male partner in a marriage. E.g. Yinka's younger, son, younger sister Kemi is married to Uche. Two, a non-existent man in a non-existent marriage whose whereabouts is often asked about, usually by Nigerian mums and aunties to single British Nigerian women. E.g. So Yinka, tell me, where is your husband? Ah, uh, uh, you're 31 now. This strikes me as sort of a Nigerian uh, black joy fun book and also to me seemed quite similar to the idea of Daryl A for aunties not in the same way as in um like the plot is different but the idea of interfering family members uh trying to get you wedding dates so yeah Yinka where is your husband the other one very different is All's Well by Mona Awad I read Bunny this is the first Mona Awad book I've read. I know she's also got 13 ways of looking at a fat girl, which I will at some point get my hands on. But Bunny was like Heather's slash Mean Girls on acid. And it was a trip. And I had no idea what was going on for half of it, but I adored it. And it was my absolute favourite book of 2020. So when the opportunity came to get her next one, I was like, um, sign me up, yes please. Now this is very different because this is sort of, um, this is a college dark academia kind of narrative. Whereas All's Well, as you can tell, maybe, is Shakespeare kind of feeling. Miranda Fitch's life is a waking nightmare. The accident that ended her burgeoning acting career left her with an excruciating chronic back pain. Side note, I always have excruciating chronic back pain. Well, let's see if I end up in the same predicament as Miranda. Failed marriage. I don't have one of them. A deepening dependence on painkillers. I thankfully haven't got one of them either. An out on the verge of losing her job as college theatre director. Determined to put on Shakespeare's All's Well That Ends Well, the play that promised and, co and cost everything, she faces a mutinous cast hell-bent on staging Macbeth instead. Miranda sees a chance at redemption slipping through her fingers. I I think she's just a brilliant author, um, judging on the one book of hers I've read, but again, adored it. So we'll see how we go with the next one. All's well, Mona Awad. And that is out in February. I don't know the exact... February 3rd, so today, as I'm filming this. Get your hands on a copy. All's well, Mona Awad. Moving on now to historical fiction, my favourite genre, as you might be able to tell. To start off, we have got The Gifts by Liz Hyder. Now, quite a few of these do fall into my favourite little subcategory of fantastical historical fiction, and this definitely does. October 1840, a young woman staggers alone through a forest in Shropshire as a huge pair of impossible wings rip themselves from her shoulders. Meanwhile, when rumours of a fallen angel cause a frenzy across London, a surgeon desperate for fame and fortune finds himself in the grip of a dangerous obsession, one that will place the woman he seeks in the most terrible danger. This is right up my street. I need to stop the book slapping, I'm sorry. I don't know exactly when it's published, but I will put a note somewhere 
here as an editing. Next, we have Moonlight and the Perla's Daughter. And it's super shiny and it's like reflecting beautifully off my ring light. Ah, ah. This is by Lizzie Pook. Again, I don't have a publication date for this offhand. Oh, but it's all I've got is March. But again, if I discover the actual publication date, I'll put it here. Oh, 1886, Bannon Bay, Australia. Fortune waits at the bottom of the ocean for reckless souls who push themselves and others to their limits to seek it. When Eliza's beloved father, the town's most successful Perla, goes missing, whispers from the townsfolk suggest mutiny or murder. It is only Eliza who refuses to believe her father is dead, and it falls to her to ask the questions no one else dares to ask. A lot of historical fiction does tend to be sort of 19th century London. Not to diss on the gifts, but it's that kind of era. And so to have historical fiction that is a in a different country and b in a country that i love and adore which is australia where i lived for three years um it just really it flutes my boot very different vibes this is the house of footstep by matthew west this is also published today as i'm filming this so february 3rd so once i put out this video it will be out it's 1923 and at thistlecrook house a forbidding home on the scottish border the roaring 20s seem not to have arrived when Simon Christie is assigned the job cataloguing the infamous art collection of the Mordrake family, he can't believe his luck. Night falls each evening though, and a growing sense of unease roils in shifting shadows. Simon must decide what he can trust in the dusk in this place between lands, between light and dark. Ooh -hoo. Having just gone from Australia to Scotland, where I will admit I have only been once, but I've watched a lot of Outlander, so basically I feel like I'm an expert. That was a joke. I love the idea of everything being in, in the in-between space, in the borders. And it seems really spooky and I love a spooky house. Proper gothic. Next, from a spooky house to a fancy house, we have The Winter Guest by W.C. Ryan. Shamefully, I think I might have spilt some tea on the front. Oh dear. January 1921, so very similar time period, by about two years. Though the Great War is over, in Ireland a new civil war is raging. The once grand Kilcogan house, shrouded in sea mist, lies half empty and filled with ghosts, both real and imagined. The Prendervilles, the noble family within, coexisting only so long as each of their secrets are kept. When an IRA ambush goes terribly wrong, Maud Prendeville, eldest daughter of Lord Kilcogan, is killed, setting the family reeling. Captain Tom Harkin, an IRA intelligence officer, and Maud's former fiance is sent to investigate, becoming an unwelcome guest in this gloomy household. It's a mystery in a glamorous house where everything is not as it seems. Yes, please. <laughs> Next. So, from London to Australia to Scotland to Ireland to Russia, we've got Porcelain Doll by Kristen Loesch. This is out on the 17th of February, so just a couple of weeks time. This is described as being an epic debut novel of secrets, revenge and redemption across three generations of Russian women from the 1917 revolution, the last days of the USSR. It's me. Quite often generational books are chonkers. For example, um, Oh, where is she? Eighth Life, just shy of a thousand pages. Whereas Porcelain Doll is, is, I'm not sure because the proof copy doesn't have page numbers, but you know. So the last one is Winchelsea by Alex Preston. I talk a lot about how I'm a sucker for a pretty hardback. And I mean, can you even, look how gorgeous this is. An 18th century tale of revenge, piracy and transformation, raging from the smugglers' tunnels on the south coast to the battlefield of Culloden. The year is 1742. Goody Brown, saved from drowning and adopted as a baby, has grown up happily in the smuggling town of Winchelsea. Goody turns 16, her father is murdered in the night by men he thought were her friends. Winchelsea is an electrifying story of vengeance and transformation, a rare, lyrical and transporting work of historical imagination that makes the past so real we can touch it. Next, I think we'll go to, oh, did you hear my neck? 
Next we'll go to teen fiction. Six books in teen, starting with If This Gets Out by Sophie Gonzalez and Kale Dietrich. 18 year olds Ruben Montez and Zach Knight are two members of the boy band Saturday. Side note, if, for all my UK huns, um, I really enjoy that the Saturdays has now just become Saturday and changed gender. One of the biggest acts in America. Along with their bandmates, Angel Fan and John Braxton, the four are teenage heartbreakers in front of their cameras and best friends backstage. But privately, cracks are beginning to form, their once easy records straining under the pressures of fame. And Ruben confides in Sack, who's feeling smothered by Madden's pressure to stay in the closet. On a whirlwind tour throughout Europe, but through an unrelenting schedule and minimal supervision, Ruben and Zach come to rely on each other more and more and their already close friendship evolves into a romance. When they decide they're ready to tell their fans and live freely, Zach and Ruben start to realise they'll never have the support of their management. Um, it's feeling very Larry Stylinson. Just going to dip straight back into historical fiction, or teen historical fiction, with Hotel Magnifique by Emily J. Taylor. Richly imagined escapist YA fantasy with an irresistibly decadent setting in a magical hotel, perfect for fans of Caraval and the Night Circus. Like, literally, yes. <laughs> I wish I'd take my money, but this was sent to me. The legendary Hotel Magnifique is like no other. A magical world of golden ceilings, enchanting soirees, and fountains flowing with champagne. They change location every night, stopping in each place only once a decade. When the Magnifique comes to her hometown, 17-year-old Jenny hatches a plan to secure jobs there for herself and her younger sister, longing to escape their dreary life. Luck is on their side, and with a stroke of luminous ink on paper, the sisters are swept into life of adventure and opulence. But Jenny soon begins to notice sinister spots in the hotel's decadent facade. Who is the shower Dimitri who runs the hotel? And can the girls discover the price paid by those who reside there before it's too late? Again, our editing Helen will have it somewhere. Hotel Magnifique! Another one that's out already is The Ivory Key by Ashkaya Raman. Four siblings, a country to ruin, one quest to save them all. <gasps> shiny, shiny, beautiful, beautiful. It's published by Hotkey, and if you know publishing, then you'll know Hotkey always have on the back um, like what you can expect from the book. And they say it's magic, secrets, ciphers, and sibling rivalry. This is what that looks like. The front looks like. I feel like I've also seen a lot of this around on Instagram. So if you have read this, let me know. This is The Blue Book of Nebo by Manon Stefan Roz. It's really little. It, uh, how long is she? It's 146 pages. So you could bust this out within an hour or two. Dylan was six when the end came back in 2018, when the electricity went off for good and the normal 21st century world he knew disappeared. Now he's 14, and he and his mum have survived in their isolated hilltop house in the village of Nebo in northwest Wales. Despite their close relationship, each has their own secrets, thoughts and memories, which emerge as, in turn, they write in a found notebook, the Blue Book of Nebo. I love the kind of post-apocalyptic, but that is our, his our history is 2018, right? This is 2020 now. No, it's not, it's 2022. Yeah, the, the Post-apocalyptic isn't some future world somewhere. It's it's Wales four years ago. And this kind of re I just find it really intriguing. And when it arrived, I was like, oh it's so small. It's so little. So I'm very I'm very excited by it. I feel like, you know, it takes a lot of craft to put a big idea, a big concept, into something so small. Next up, we've got The Balloon Thief by Anissa Marifu. Um, very much approved cover. Uh, I've got no idea what the eventual um, cover will look like. But this, oh, this is published on the 3rd of March. For Khadija, the only escape from an arranged betrothal is the sky. Seeing a rogue hot air balloon fighting against its ropes, she jumps at a chance for adventure. Khadija soon finds an unlikely ally, but Jacob is an oppressed Hari. Khadija are ruling Gardean, and a revolution is stirring all around them. Together, Jacob and Khadija must decide where they belong and whether their friendship is worth fighting for. This explores racism, misogyny and discrimination in a highly original fantasy universe, perfect for fans of Lots of Gosses, We Hunt the Flame and Rebel of the Sands. 
something that I really enjoy with teen fantasy is that they have this ability to tackle these huge topics in like really accessible fantastical ways um and the balloon thief promises to be one of them the bone spindle by leslie vedder kiss the prince break the curse it's a gender flipped sleeping beauty um i don't know how else to explain it other than this is the concept <laughs> got quite a few to get through starting up with the ship of clouds and stars by amy raphael a captivating story of courage and high seas adventure set against a thrilling backdrop of a race to find the tree of legend yes i love quest books in children's fiction they are so much fun. I love a journey. I love the trend in publishing and it feels like it's diminishing it to call it a trend. But there is a trend towards sort of questing in books with strong female characters. And it seems like such a cliche to say, but when it's actually put into practice, it is magic. And I love seeing girls come into the shop that I work at and see questing exciting adventure books with girls in and go oh yes yeah i want that please mum like the dedication is for all female scientists whose brilliant work has been attributed to male colleagues we're starting them young as feminists and i'm so into it 1832 nico cloud again children's books that everyone has the best names why can I not be called Nico Cloud? Desperately wants to be an explorer, but her parents think adventures aren't for girls. Fate intervenes when Nico catches a kitten on board a ship, and the ship sails out to sea. Nico is an accidental stowaway. Lucky for her, the ship belongs to a famous scientist who is on a quest for new discoveries. But clouds are brewing overhead, and cunning pirates are determined to wreck the crew's mission. Can Nico steer the ship to victory and prove her parents wrong? Mm. Another questing female-led adventure story for children. The Map Makers by Tamsin Merchant. Um, it came in ribbon. Can you even cope? Because I can't. This looks like this is the sequel to the Hat Makers, which was the January book of the month um, for children for Waterstones. I had a lot of fun reading it. Um, and I do think everyone should read it. So this is the follow-up. This is the yeah, the map makers. So at spoilers, but at the end of book one, Cordelia, whose father has um been lost at sea, receives a magical um map in invisible ink to where she can find her father. And so we're continuing our adventure to go and get him in the book two in the map makers. Um these books have really, really pretty illustrations. My copy came with the map that was separate. I mean, look at that. Look at that! I just think so much detail goes into it and I think they're just really gorgeous, gorgeous books. My number one takeaway from when I read The Hat Makers is that it doesn't talk down to the audience. You get a lot in children's books, especially because this is technically a celebrity writer. Um, or like actress turned writer and as a children's bookseller I find a lot of books that are written by famouses aren't good they think that oh like it's another step in my like no I'll just add it as like a thing in my career I'll do a collab with boohoo I'll have like a shoe line I'll write a children's book or I'll go strike a children's book and Townsend Merchant doesn't do that like it doesn't it's, it's not tacky it doesn't talk down to anyone it doesn't insult the intelligence of kids it doesn't feel like a cash grab it feels like a genuine this is a really lovely series for little girls to have or young adventurers to have i'll go off my high horse in a minute i promise <laughs> next up we've got l mcnichol like a charm such a pretty cover um her debut novel, which was a kind of spark 
was the uh, 2021 Children's Book Prize winner. I think she's such a great writer. This is her first um, fantasy book. Edinburgh is a city filled with magical creatures. No one can see them except Ramya Knox. As she is pulled into her family's world of secrets and spells, Ramya sets out to discover the truth from the hidden folk with only three words of warning from her grandfather. Beware the sirens. Plunged into an adventure that will change everything, Ramya is about to learn there is more to her powers than she ever imagined. Please excuse me, I need to go on. It's, it, it is another um, adventuring quest. Strong female lead, but I'm not mad at it. Also, I really want to live in Edinburgh. So I, I will take any bit of Edinburgh that I can. Elma Inigal, like a charm. The Secret of Haven Point by Lisette Orton. Proof cover looks like this. It is published at some point. 3rd of February, again, today. So many books published today. You can, you can tell it's my day off and that I didn't realize everything was out today. Here are the facts. One, my name is Alpha Lux. Alpha because it's the first letter of the Greek alphabet and I was reckling number one. Lux because the box I was found in had Lux soap flakes written all over it. Two, my face looks like a flame grilled jellyfish. Three, I was raised by a mermaid. Four, I always tell the truth. I'll give you a bit of time to let that sink in. Ready? Then let's begin. Filled with mermaids, mystery and much more, The Secret of Haven Point celebrates the joy of found families and the importance of inclusion and acceptance. We've got the new one from Phil Earl, which is While the Storm Rages. As you can see from my cover, it is out in June. Inspired by true events, join Noah in an unforgettable wartime mission to save his beloved dog, Win. If the dog dies, I don't think that I can contain myself. September 1939. As Noah's dad marches off to war, he asks Noah to keep the family dog safe. I can already tell I'm going to be in pieces. Yet Noah's hopes of doing that are crushed when the government advises people to put their pets down as part of war preparations. Children are heartbroken, choose outside vet surgery stretch for miles. Noah refuses to let that happen to win. With his two friends in tow, he makes a pledge to go on the run and save as many animals as he can, no matter what. I mean, can you cope? Can you cope? I'm not coping. I need to have some tea. I just love kids' books. Final one, which is also out now, which is the February book of the month for Waterstones for Children. Loki, A Bad God's Guide to Being Good. Um, it is like the anti-Tom Gates. And this isn't me being, you know, in my Waterstones job, saying like, oh, you should read this book because I'm paid to tell you you should read this book. This is, uh, I will send a copy of this as part of the um, shop. As a children's bookseller for the shop, I was sent a copy. I am going to probably get through this in an hour, hour or two. So this is much more, I feel like a getting kids engaged with books kind of deal, as well as just being like, you know, fun and exciting and funny in its own right. So when I say it's like Tom Gates or like Wimpy Kid, what I mean is it's got a bunch of doodles and drawings. It is the diary of Loki the trickster god who has been trapped as a punishment in the body of an 11 year old. Last up are my others. So we've got uh, a heavy hitter and the short stories. So we'll start with the uh, short stories. We've got Parallel Hells by Leon Craig. 13 darkly audacious stories of Parallel Hells we meet a golem made of clay, learning his powers far exceed his creator's expectations. A ruined mansion which grants the secret wishes of a group of revellers and a notorious murderer who discovers her Viking husband is not as he seems. A deliciously strange debut collection, Leon Craig draws on folklore and gothic horror in, f in refreshingly inventive ways to explore queer identity, love, power and the complicated nature of being human. Um, it's a weird choice for me for February. I, I like I like gothic fiction. I do. I like I like creepy. I don't dress like I like creepy books. <laughs> and I like very specifically like creepy gothic quite literary kind of 
and this looked right up my street um but not to be read at night last one um i said it was a heavy hitter it is a little crate book or will be an little crate book it is all over sort of pre-orders i'm seeing a lot of hype about this building up on instagram and on tiktok and i am so happy that i have a copy of atlas six by olivia blake <laughs> the world's best magicians accept the opportunity of a lifetime six are chosen five will walk away i don't feel like i need to do much more um like you need to read this because because uh if you're following sort of publishing trends following book talk bookstagram then this will be on your radar so that brings me neatly on to well no it doesn't but i'm gonna pretend it does what is the redhead reading i am reading the paris apartment by lucy foley this was in my last video of uh, most anticipated books of the year um I'm still kind of anticipating it. I'm not very far through. And the thing with Lucy Foley is that it's very fast paced. And for the majority of it, you're not quite sure what's happening. I'm still kind of at the beginning stages of trying to figure out what exactly happened. So we know that Ben um, has gone missing, potentially murdered, probably murdered, um, because he's not there to greet his sister Jess when she turns up. And there's all this kind of no one in the apartment block is willing to talk to Jess about anything, let alone sort of what might have happened to her brother. Um, so again, very, very early days, but already really intrigued, really enjoying it. I just feel like I need to carve out some time to sit and, and blast my way through. And that, I believe, is all my recent book mail. Uh -huh.